This video is going to provide a brief, in-depth exploration of the standard unpacking. This will serve as a foundational guide only for the kindergarten through fifth grade North Dakota State standards. Future presentations will only focus exclusively on the unpack standards without additional commentary through video. So it'll just be a Google slide. This particular video is going to look at under unpacking the standards in kindergarten with the categories of number and operations, algebraic reasoning, geometry and measurement, as well as data, probability and statistics. Please keep in mind that this presentation is only going to focus on the priority standards as that will be our main focus throughout our course. You'll have an opportunity to practice all standards through our Khan Academy practice. However, our learning menus will only focus on those which have been deemed priority standards. Before we get started, uh, we should take a look at the components of a standard. Uh, the new standards are written such that we look at the category. So in this particular one, when I'm looking at kindergarten, we have number and operations, which is deemed with NO. Then we have the subcategory of counting and cardinality, CC. And we can drill down to the standard number itself. The first letter K represents kindergarten. Dot NO, number and operations, dot CC, the subcategory of counting cardinality, and then dot one, the first standard in that list. What does unpacking standard really mean? Well, unpacking standards is needed to assist with dissecting a complex idea and its smaller parts to reveal a clear understanding of its components and implications. It's about transforming broad overreaching goals into specific measurable learning objectives. Unpacking standards is like peeling an onion. And when I say peeling an onion, I'm emphasizing the layered nature of those standards. Just as an onion has multiple layers, a standard encompasses various levels of understanding and skills. So why should we unpack standards? It's important to help identify clarity. It helps teachers understand the exact expectations of the standard. It helps us uh, bring in a focus, so it prevents teachers from trying to teach too much all at one time. It helps us with differentiation. It allows us to tailor instruction to meet the needs of our diverse learners and ultimately with assessments. So it helps us create meaningful assessments that align with the standard to make sure we've reached our objectives. In this particular standard um, with number and operations, I've listed the four number and operations dot count and cardinality, uh, the standards themselves, the language of the standards. So how do we unpack the standards? So first we need to identify the standards themselves. So here they are listed, clearly define the standard we're working with, We'll then identify key concepts. So we're gonna determine the main ideas or concepts within the standard as well as vocabulary. We'll identify the skills that identify the ability students need to demonstrate. We may also determine the depth of knowledge, which is understand the level of thinking required, which can be aligned to Bloom's taxonomy. Consider context. So think about how the standard relates to real world applications. Okay, so let's unpack these standards. First, I'm going to um, underline the key concepts, vocabulary, and ideas. These are the skills learners need to be able to do within each standard. So I've underlined sequential order, ones and tens, decouple transitions, count verbally forward. I've underlined count backward within 10, numeral within 20, how many objects, an arranged pattern, scattered configuration, represent a quantity and numeral. Okay, so now once I've identified key concepts, vocabulary, and ideas, we then can look at the specific verbs. I have circled all of the verbs within the concepts, vocabulary, and ideas. These are the verbs for how learners are going to show 
the concepts, vocabulary, and ideas. So what are the actions that they're going to take? When we're unpacking standards, verbs are crucial as they indicate the actions or skills learners are expected to demonstrate. Some essential verb types that we might come across could be cognitive verbs, Cognitive verbs uh, encompass knowing, comprehending, applying, analyzing, evaluating, creating. There might be action verbs such as communicating and performing. Other important verbs that we might come across might be demonstrating, using, and developing. Now, of course, within each of these subcategories of verbs, there are other action verbs that also mean uh, knowing. Knowing could be understand, identify, recall, define, describe, label, list, memorize, name, recognize, state. Action verbs such as performing could be verbs such as conduct, examine, investigate, manipulate, perform. Developing could be create, design, produce. Something to remember moving forward is that Bloom's taxonomy can be a helpful tool for categorizing verbs based on their cognitive levels. The specific verbs used will depend on the subject area and grade level. So you should expect that the, those verbs in kindergarten will be very different than the verbs in, let's say, eighth or ninth grade. And consider the depth of knowledge required for each verb. Now, you'll get into much more detail with these kinds of verbs and how you should connect them to Bloom's taxonomy and the depth of knowledge in further education classes. I just want to give us a brief overview of the standards and how we can pull information from those standards to show how to do the math in kindergarten through fifth grade before um, you get to, to uh, Math 315, which is Math Methods. And then I also like to put in other words, in my own words, what each standard is doing. So I kind of identify the verb and what students should be able to do with that verb in my own words. Going on to the number and base 10 subcategory, we've got k.no.nb.1 and .2. Again, the first thing we're going to do is start off by underlying key concepts, vocabulary, and ideas. So I'm going to compose and decompose numbers, uh, groups of tens and ones, and some more ones, model drawing equation. We need to compare two numbers, uh, greater than, less than, or equal to. And these are skills learners need to be able to do within each standard. From there, we're going to circle any of the uh, verbs that are linked to these concepts. So compose and decompose, use, compare, and use again. In other words, so in my own words with these two particular standards, we need to compose, decompose, use, and compare. And then what are we doing with those verbs? So from numbers 11 to 19, I need to compose using groups of 10 ones and some more, decompose, numbers from 11 to 19 into a group of 10 ones and some more ones. I need to use models, drawings, equations. I need to use the words greater than, less than, or equal to, and I need to be comparing two numbers between 1 and 20. So it really decomposes the standards themselves into easier and workable things if I can reword it in my own words using the verbs and the concepts that students need to be able to do. Here we're moving into the category of algebraic reasoning and our algebraic reasoning, we've got operations and algebraic thinking as the subcategory. We've got five standards here. The first thing I'm going to do is underline the key concepts, vocab, and ideas. I underlined automatically, add, subtract, within five, number from one to nine, number that makes 10, model, drawing, equation, decompose numbers, less than or equal to 10, verbal explanations, objects, drawing, authentic word problems, addition, put together, add to 10. Authentic word problems, subtract, take apart, take from within 10. 
From here, we'll circle the verbs um, automatically, add, subtract, find, share, decompose, use, solve, put together, take apart, adding to, taking from. So those are all of our action verbs, what students need to be able to do with our content. And then I went into a little more detail here because uh, the word automatic, I really wasn't sure what does it mean automatic. Well, automatic means that I can fluently um, add these numbers and subtract these quickly without hesitation. Okay, so I added that fluency part in there um, for my knowledge on what that needed to mean. I need to be able to find, share, decompose, use, solve, put together, take apart, and take from, and then the concepts, vocabulary, and ideas associated with those verbs in my own words. Then we're moving into geometry and measurement with data, probability, and statistics. So we've got the category of geometry and measurement with geometry as the subcategory. We've got two standards here that we're covering and one standard with data, probability, and statistics with the data subcategory. Underlining the key concepts of vocab and ideas, I need to name shapes that are two-dimensional and those two dimensional ones are squares, circles, triangles, rectangles, orientation and size. Similarly with three dimensional shapes, cubes, spheres, their orientation and size. And with the data, I need to sort, classify, attributes, explain reasoning. Then from here, we will circle the vocab, or the verbs, name, identify, sort, classify, explain. I went into my own words with each one of those verbs, name, identify, sort, classify, and explain what we need to do with those. Those are all of the standards that we're covering in our first learning menu, but where do we go from here? Once we can decompose and unpack standards, once you have unpacked standards to understand how and what learners will be doing, you'll then be able to create learning objectives and assessments tailored to the standards themselves much more on unpacking writing learning objectives and assessment will come in subsequent educ courses they might come from your methods courses they might come from the assessment class itself towards the end of your time here um, but remember our goal in this class is to make sure we have the skills and math needed in grades k through five unpacking standards is a crucial first step in effective curriculum planning but it's just the beginning, right? Here's what you would go next to, okay? Um, curriculum mapping. This is sequencing, determining the logical order in which to teach the unpacked standards. Pacing, it helps allocate appropriate time for each standard based on its complexity and importance. Um, a one line standard that you saw earlier actually can be decomposed into multiple different things depending upon how many verbs and how many concepts, vocabulary, and ideas that are contained in that one sentence alone. It helps identify opportunities to integrate standards across different subjects or units. It helps us create learning objectives and essential questions. Again, those learning objectives and essential questions will come much later in your methods courses. You can develop a clear and measurable learning goals for each unpacked standard. You can frame inquiry-based learning experience around these key concepts. And then ultimately assessment, we can align and design assessments that directly measure student achievement of the unpacked standards. We can also incorporate a variety of assessment methods, formative, summative, authentic, to gather comprehensive data.